Hello everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the K2C Fanbase channel. My name is Joey and today we have some more news about Keeper of Velocity's Book 9 and we have two exclusive deleted scenes from Book 1 and Book 2. There has been a lot of news recently with the upcoming books and if you haven't heard already, Shannon basically gave us the ultimate good news and bad news a couple weeks ago. The good news of course is that she gave birth to a baby boy and then a couple weeks later she followed up with the bad news that because of that book 9 is going to be released in fall 2022. In that same post she did um, confirm that Simon Kids and Shannon will be working to put together some incredible bonus things for her social media. It's been a couple weeks after that, everybody's been asking um, us to make a video about these exclusive um, stuff that she posts on her Instagram, and so here I am. And we are going to be celebrating Keeper Summer from June 7th to September 1st. There will be a new KTLC activity every Monday and a never before seen deleted scene every Thursday. So he said check back Monday and here is the simple post for Monday. How and when did you discover Keeper of the Lost Cities? And my answer to this question is I was actually in fifth grade and it was around the end of the year and I saw um, one of my classmates reading Never Seen, I'm pretty sure. And I looked at the cover, it looked pretty interesting so I decided to pick up book one from my local Barnes and Noble, I'm pretty sure. I read the first book, I really enjoyed the first book, and then I ordered the entire rest of the series on Amazon the day later. So that is how I discovered Keeper of the Lost Cities, and I have been hooked ever since. And let's move on to actually the first deleted scene. All right, so here's the deleted scene. When Shannon writes a Keeper book, she ends up deleting scenes during the revision process. So today we're sharing the original prologue from the Keeper of the Lost Cities. So I'm pretty sure Troy is going to be leaving his thoughts after mine and let's quickly read it right now. Deleted original prologue from Keeper of the Lost Cities. I wrote this scene because I wanted the beginning of Keeper of the Lost Cities to feel mysterious and ominous, but I decided it wouldn't work for readers to have more knowledge about Sophie's past than Sophie did. I made her character feel a bit annoying since it took her so long to catch up to everyone else. So I cut this and I made the series third person limited, meaning I only include a scene if Sophie's in it. Oh, and you may notice that a few of the details about Prentice memory break may have changed since I wrote this prologue. Writing is rewriting. I'm rewriting again and again and again. Signed, Shannon. No match. The two words flash red right across the screen like a taunt tempting Quinlan to fling the palm-sized gadget off the rooftop and let it shatter into a million pieces below. Somehow he fought the urge, instead taking another slow, deep breath before pressing the final sequence of buttons. Please work, he begged the tiny screen as he ran his fingers across his sweat-streaked forehead. Talking to inanimate objects, a sure sign of desperation. A second later the screen flashed with the words, unable to process. Quinlan clenched the blinking square in his fist like that would somehow make it cooperate. When it didn't help, he switched it off and shoved the gadget deep into the pocket of his cape and glanced up at the sky. Time to deliver the bad news. The night was just starting to fade into the deep blue glow of the early dawn and one by one the stars were winking away. Alden would be here any minute. But as the seconds dragged by, Quinlan could only pace the length of the rooftop and wait. Back and forth back and forth. A flash of light stopped him in his tracks, and a tall figure in a dark gray cape shimmered onto the rooftop next to him. I came as soon as I could. Alden apologized as he smoothed his dark wavy hair. His vibrant teal eyes shone even in the dim light. What did you find? Quinlan tried to force out the words. When they couldn't come, he reached into his pocket and retrieved the gadget, holding it out to Alden. See for yourself. Alden tapped the screen and a hologram appeared, the twisted double helix of a DNA strand glowing in the darkness. Well, this is a surprise, Alden whispered. A shadow of concern was painted across his handsome face. Have you shown us to anyone? Only you. Good, let's keep it that way. Quinlan nodded. You couldn't get anything else? Alden asked, still studying the hologram. I tried, Quinlan assured him, but Prentice's mind was particularly strong. 
had to shatter his sandy in order to extract the one piece I recovered. Alden nodded gravely. Such a waste. He held out the hologram closer to his face, his eyes narrowing. I'm no expert on these, but this one looks strange, doesn't it? It's been altered somehow, Quinlan agreed. The system couldn't even process it. Frustration dripped off every word. Alden took a turn at pacing. I assume there was no match. Quinlan laughed darkly. I ran it five times. Alden ran it as six to be sure. Well, at least we know it's a girl. They both fell silent, lost in their own thoughts. What do you think it means? Quinlan finally whispered into the darkness. I have no idea, Alden admitted. He touched the center of the screen and the hologram disappeared, but I need to find her. You really think you can? Quinlan asked. Where will you look? I'm not entirely sure, though I suppose if I wanted to hide a child, there's one place I'll be fairly certain no one would search. Quinlan sucked in a breath. You don't mean. Alden nodded. It seems like the best place to start. But there are so many of them, and she could be anywhere. It won't be easy, Alden agreed. I'll probably have to wait until her abilities develop before I can truly identify her. That will take years, Quinlan warned. I know, well I'll have to be patient. Quinlan looked away. The poor child. A rueful smile spread across Alden's lips. Oh, they're not all bad. Still, to be raised by humans. Quinlan cringed just saying the word. Alden's steel eyes twinkled mysteriously as he pulled a pathfinder from his pocket and held the crystal out into the first rays of dawn. A single beam of light was refracted toward the ground. Who knows, maybe it will be good for her, he said mostly to himself, before glancing at Quinlan. I'll let you know when I find her. Don't you mean if you find her? Quinlan couldn't help asking. Alden shook his head. Oh, I will find her. I just don't know what we'll do with her once I do. He gave a half bow and stepped into the beam of light from his wand. His body glittered for a second and then he vanished. So that was the first deleted scene that we have got so far. I really enjoyed this prologue and I feel like it might have done a better job if she just executed it differently because I know what she, what she said was right. She said she wanted the beginning to feel mysterious and stuff, but it didn't work because we would know too much already about Sophie. and. I guess this is true because like reading back on this after I finished the series multiple times it does look really good but if I was reading this series for a first time it might just feel overwhelming. And here's Troy's thoughts on this prologue because I know he wanted to say something. Hello it is Troy and I'm also here to talk about my opinion on the deleted scenes that Shona has posted thus far. So for the prologue that she had deleted, I actually really, really enjoyed it, probably more so than the actual prologue that, you know, was published because I feel like it adds a bit more intrigue and like I would just like to know a little bit more details before going into a book. Like it leaves me with questions, but do I really want to go into a book that's so vague or do I want to have this kind of like suspenseful tone with like this interesting memory break and then like this interesting concept of this girl with interesting DNA or like uh, this girl that's raised by humans in an elven world. I just think there's a difference there and I really like the more specific kind of like setting up a scene that was, you know, previous to the events in the book. The, the prologue that she did publish worked, but overall my opinion is that the one that she did not publish was better. All right, the next post in Keeper Summer is what moment in the series made you laugh the loudest? And personally for me, there are so many moments in the series that actually did, actually did make me laugh out loud. But I definitely have to go with either when Fitz got stuck in a chandelier or when Keith was trying the EL fudges for the first time, cause those were actually really funny. And then the last thing that we have for today is a deleted scene from Exile. This is from the Orn Flare sequence in Exile, and I actually have not um, read this one yet. So this is gonna be my first time reading, first time reacting, and I'm super excited. All right, deleted scene from Exile. This scene used to be a part of the Orn Flare sequence, and it was a moment I created to show that something might be wrong with Sophie's abilities. But I realized after I wrote it that I didn't really sell the idea that she was malfunctioning. If anything, it made her seem even stronger, so I cut it out. And I considered including this skill in a later Keeper book, but I decided it was too confusing trying to differentiate it from other things Telepath could and couldn't do. So I dropped the idea from the series entirely. Signed, Shannon. 
Bianca yelped and jumped out of her seat. Don't do that, she screamed, flinging a cookie at Fitz's head. Did I miss something? Sophie asked. Yeah, Bianca's afraid of the dark, Fitz told her. More like my brother loves torturing me with his evil mind games, Bianca corrected. Actually, it's a highly developed skill, Fitz explained with a smug grin. I bet even Sophie can't do it. His eyes narrowed and Bianca screamed again. Even Keith jumped, though he tried to cover it with a cough. Sophie frowned. I don't get it. You didn't see the giant shadow wolf that just attacked us? Bianca asked before screaming again. There, right there. You don't, really don't see that? She pointed to the fire, but all Sophie saw were the dancing rainbow-colored flames. Okay, you guys are starting to freak me out, Sophie admitted. What's going on? He's impelling, Alan explained as he joined them by the fire. That's what we call it when a telepath pushes a shadow of a thought into someone else's mind to make them see something that isn't there. It's mostly a novelty, a bit of a gray area when it comes to the rules of telepathy. But it appears your unique blocking protects you. But that doesn't make any sense, Fitz argued, narrowing his eyes yet again and making everyone except Sophie flinch. I can transmit to her now. Shouldn't I be able to impel? Impelling reaches a different part of the brain, Alden reminded him, and your connection to Sophie is limited. You can't even read her thoughts, only make her hear yours. Keith laughed. Foster loves keeping her sense of mystery. Fitz frowned and Bianca screamed again, clinging to Alden's arm. Dad, tell him to knock it off. I think that's enough of Pelling for one night, son. Though I wonder... Alden turned to Sophie. Would you like to give it a try? All you have to do is concentrate on a thought and push it toward us without opening your mind to ours. I guess, Sophie mumbled, not loving the way everyone was staring at her. She felt too frazzled to come up with anything original, so she copied Fitz's idea and imagined a shadow wolf with hackles, raised and fangs bared. When she could picture every strand of its bristled fur, she narrowed her eyes and shoved the thought toward her friends. What the? He shouted, covering his ears as Alden ducked and Bianca and Fitz screamed. Sophie cleared the image from her head and everyone slowly straightened, blinking at her with wide, haunted eyes. Did you open your mind to ours? Alden asked. Sophie shook her head. Why? That was no shadow, Keith mumbled, looking paler than she had ever seen him. That was a full-color, 20-foot monster. I swear I could even smell the dog breath. Me too, Fitz said quietly, and I could hear it snarling. It was too real, Brianna whispered, hugging her dad and glancing around her like she expected the wolf to emerge from the shadows any second. I'm sorry, I didn't mean... Sophie fumbled for her home crystal. Wait, Alden said as she held her pendant into the firelight. You don't have to leave, you didn't do anything wrong. I nearly gave you guys a panic attack. Yeah, you did, Fitz said, trying to smile but not pulling it off. I almost peed my pants, Keith added. Humiliation burned in Sophie's eyes. Why did she always mess everything up? Your mind is stronger than we're used to, that's all, Alan assured her. Well, that's still a problem, Sophie replied. She didn't know her own strength. And if she couldn't understand herself, who could? It's really okay, Sophie, Alan insisted. Please stay. She tried to stand a little taller as she shook her head. Honestly, I, I have a headache now, and I'm sure Edeline's waiting for me. Thank you so much for dinner and the orange flair. I'll see you guys at the opening ceremonies, right? She asked Fitz, Keith, and Bianca. They nodded, and everyone tried to smile as Sophie let the warm light whisk her away. But Sophie could, would never forget the look on their pale faces. Fear. Maybe even terror. Like she was the monster. And Sophie had a horrible feeling that they might be right. Okay, so I kind of liked it, but I didn't really think it fit. Like she said, it was going to be part of the Orn Flare when everyone was like having fun and stuff. And she, Shannon said that she wanted to show that something might be wrong. But what it was true, like what she said, that it makes her seem really strong, that she could really impel, like really powerfully. I'm going to be honest, I'm really glad she removed that like ability of a telepath where they can impel things. I don't know, it just doesn't fit at all. That's all I have to say about that. Now, my opinion on the second deleted scene that she posted with Exile, I think that she did make a good call with that one because it was just really wacky. It didn't really feel like it was even within the elven world. I felt like this kind of ability to make people see things is, it should just be a separate ability or it should, it's just too powerful. I feel like it just should not be something that any telepath can do, even if it is rare, I just, 
I felt like it was a little bit unrealistic and I'm glad she kind of cut it out because it also was just kind of wacky. Like why would they ever need to have that? And I feel like it would be just again like too out of place within the series. Shannon tries to make Sophie a little bit too weird at times. Like it feels like she always tries to have so much malfunctioning going on with Sophie and at a point it just gets too much. So I'm glad that she kind of realized that she needs to kind of draw back a little bit. So yeah. I'm recording this video on a Sunday, so that is um, unfortunately the end of all the deleted scenes and Keeper Summer posts that I have right now. Well, whenever we get another batch of them, I will um, for sure make another video about that. So that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed all of these um, deleted scenes. I really like the prologue one. Leave a comment down below. What did you think about these deleted scenes? I, as I said before, I really like the prologue and I thought that the second scene did um, deserve to be deleted. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, and if you're excited for book nine, which is gonna release all the way in 2022, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. And yeah, that's just gonna be it for this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. I enjoyed making it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.